We talk a lot about AI, crypto, and space exploration when we discuss the future. But there's this whole universe of emerging technologies that don't get enough attention. Technologies that could fundamentally reshape our world in the next decade. And that's exactly what we are going to talk about today. We are going to go through some of the emerging, the top emerging technologies over the next decade that will change, well, everything. And I'm not going to just tell you about them. I want to show you exactly how they work and even more importantly, why they matter. Before we get into it, you know the drill. Make sure to hit that subscribe button for more tech, future tech, coding, STEM all things tech, really, videos, and leave in the comments other topics you want me to cover. All right, now let's get into it. I kind of look like a watermelon today. I, I mean, I guess it's summer months, so it's suitable. Okay, now, here we go. Coming in at number one is bioconvergence. So what happens when you take biology, engineering, computer science, and other disciplines and mash them all together? You get bioconvergence, and it might completely transform industries like healthcare as we know it. Okay, so check out this tiny device here. It is called an organ on a chip, and it mimics the function of human organs for testing drugs and treatments without animal testing. It's essentially recreating human biology outside the body which allows researchers to develop personalized treatments with unprecedented precision. And this industry, global organ on a chip, I know it sounds wild, is projected to reach 209 million by 2026. That's like seven months from now. Companies like Emulate Bio and CN Bio are already using this technology to improve drug discovery and reduce reliance on animal testing. But bioconvergence goes beyond just medicine. It's helping create new food sources through alternative proteins. I mean, think lab-grown meat and fermented dairy, even sustainable biofuels. The alternative protein market is actually expected to reach 209 billion by 2035, I think it is. Which really, think about it this way. We're teaching biology to do engineering and engineering to work with biology. And that convergence is going to touch everything from how we treat disease to how we feed ourselves and power our homes. And we're talking about this subject in the world of tech because it is all fueled and powered by technology. And I knew when I was making this video, I, I started with a list that was very obvious. It was very much like AI is going to change our future. Uh, you know, uh, every like crypto is going to change our future, things that we are so familiar with. And I thought, you know what? I really want to make a video where we're diving into these specific technologies, specific changes that are going to have a huge impact on our future. So if you are watching this and you are someone who's like, you know what? I want to find a very niche area that I can grow into, maybe make lots of money, have a great career into these, all these ones we're going through, I would say are areas to look into. But then on the flip side, if you're not interested in, you know, career or money, you just want really interesting technology. These are some of the top emerging and most interesting, fascinating technologies that are changing and impacting our lives, which is really exciting. Okay. Let's get to tech number two. Tech number two is neuromorphic computing. Our brains are remarkable. I mean, they process massive amounts of information while using about as much energy as a light bulb. Fun fact, by the way. But our computers, they're not so energy efficient. This is why neuromorphic computing is so fascinating. Instead of processing information like typical computers, neuromorphic chips process information like this. We're essentially building computing systems that mimic the neural structure of the human brain. They're more efficient, can learn on their own, and use a fraction of the energy of traditional computing systems. Take Intel's neuromorphic chip. It is 10 times faster than conventional CPUs at certain tasks, which is wild. I didn't even really know about these chips till I started researching them. Another is IBM's True North chip, which contains 1 million artificial neurons while consuming just 70 milliwatts of power. Tons of artificial neurons while just using such little power. That's incredible. And the implications are huge. Robots that can navigate complex environments and really act or feel like human movements. Sensors that can interpret real data, data in real time with minimal power. AI models that don't need huge energy. Intensive data centers to function, anything like that. So it's not just faster computing, it's fundamentally different computing. So this brings us to tech number three, spintronics. So here's a question for you. What if we could use not just the charge of electrons, but also their spin to store and process data? That's spintronics, spintronics. And it matters because every device you use relies on moving electrical charges, which generates heat and consumes energy. But electron spin, that can be manipulated with almost no energy loss. The Spintronics market it is expected to reach 25 billion by 2028. Scientists have already developed Spintronic memory 
MRAM is what it's called, that is a thousand times faster than conventional storage with lower power consumption. So these Spintronic devices could be 10 times more energy efficient while processing data faster than anything we have today. It's essentially like adding a whole new dimension to electronics. That can mean computers that are faster, smaller, and use way less power. Coming in at number four is one that I haven't heard about until I started doing, or hadn't heard about until I started doing a lot of research, which is atomics. Okay, this is where, in my opinion, things get pretty wild. So atomics uses supercooled atoms, we're talking nearly absolute zero, to create circuits function similar to electronics, but with atoms instead of electronics. So these atomic sensors could be a thousand times more sensitive than current technology. But you can think of it like this. If traditional electronics is like driving on a highway with traffic and stoplights, atomics is like having your own private quantum expressway. This precision is unmatched and the potential applications, especially in quantum computing, which you know I'm very fascinated about, could be revolutionary. Coming in at number five is optical computing. Okay, so we already use light to transmit data through fiber optic cables. We all know that. But what if computers could actually process information using light instead of electricity? That's optical computing, and it could be revolutionary for a few reasons. One, light moves faster than electricity. Two, photons don't generate heat like electrons. Researchers at MIT have been able to build a light-based chip that could perform computations 100 times faster than traditional electronics. And optical computers could make AI training up to 1 million times more efficient. I mean, the potential speed improvements are enormous. Tasks that might take hours on traditional computers could be done in seconds. And in a world where processing massive data sets is becoming more important, that kind of speed advantage could be transformative. All right, let's go on to tech six, advanced energy for the ocean, or advanced ocean energy, if you want to be particular. We talk a lot about solar and wind energy, but what about ocean? It's an untapped powerhouse. Beyond traditional tidal power, there are new technologies capturing energy from ocean currents, temperature differences between depths, and even salinity gradients. Because you see, the ocean contains enough energy to power the entire planet many times over and over again. And here's something really interesting. The global ocean energy market is expected to grow 87 billion by 2032. So unlike solar or wind, ocean energy is consistent and predictable. And with advanced materials solving corrosion problems, we might be on the verge of a blue energy revolution, which would be really cool to be part of on the tech side. Coming in at number seven is advanced geothermal systems. The heat beneath our feet, in, in the ground here, could power civilization for millions of years. I didn't know that till recently. And traditional geothermal energy works in places like Iceland, where hot water is naturally close to the surface. But enhanced geothermal systems, they're changing the game by creating artificial reservoirs deep underground anywhere on Earth. These systems could provide enough clean energy in the US by 2050 that could power millions of homes. And there's companies like Fervo Energy that are already providing the concept, drilling geothermal wells that use hydraulic fracturing techniques to similar how they do it with oil and gas, which is pretty cool. Check out the company. Imagine clean, constant energy available virtually anywhere, running 24 seven, regardless of weather conditions. That is what the promise of EGS brings. Coming in at number eight is 4D printing. So we all are very familiar with 3D printing and it's great, but 4D printing, that is next level. The fourth dimension is time. These materials can transform themselves after being printed, changing shape, properties, function in response to temperature, moisture, or other triggers, which is fascinating to me. The 4D printing market is projected to grow by 1.5 billion by 2030. I mean, it's such an interesting area to explore and get into, especially if you're already into the 3D printing. We're essentially programming physical intelligence into materials. For example, medical implants that adjust to your body over time, buildings that repair themselves, and clothing that adapts to the environment, which is so cool to think about. The applications are limited by only our imagination when we get to that level. Coming in at number nine is metamaterials. And this might be the closest thing we have to science fiction becoming reality. So these aren't just new materials, they're engineered structures with properties that don't exist in nature. We're designing materials at a nanoscale to manipulate waves. So light, sound, even seismic waves that were previously impossible. 
And get this, researchers at Duke University created a metamaterial super lens, which essentially breaks the diffraction limit, enabling imaging at resolutions that have never been seen before. Scientists are developing metamaterials that can bend light around objects, creating the first steps towards real invisibility cloaks. I'm, I'm not joking here, this is happening. And I mean, when you think about the implications, they're obviously mind blowing. Super lenses that see beyond the limits of normal microscopes, materials that make objects invisible to specific wavelengths of light. It's Wild. Okay, coming in at number 10, our final technology, which might be the most transformative of all, is synthetic biology. So hear me out. This goes beyond genetic engineering. Synthetic biologists are designing and building new biological parts, devices, and systems that don't exist in nature. Similar to what we're talking about in number nine. But the synthetic biology market is projected to reach 38 billion by 2027. Companies like Ginkgo Bioworks, Ginkgo, I think I'm saying that right, are programming microbes to create everything from sustainable chemicals to new medicines. They're essentially approaching biology as a technology, something we can program like computers, but made of cells instead of silicone. The applications range from microbes engineered to produce sustainable fuels, new medical treatments tailored to individual patients, or even environmental solutions like carbon capture. It's essentially programming life itself, which takes a minute to wrap your head around. And that raises some important questions about responsibility and governance that we need to address alongside this technology, which is for another video. These 10 technologies though represent just a snapshot of what's coming in the next decade. And isn't it exciting that we are going to be part of that? And while each is fascinating in its own, what's most exciting is how they'll interact and build upon each other. I mean, when you think about bioconvergence that we spoke about, it's powered by neuromorphic computing. Metamaterials are fabricated through 4D printing. Synthetic biology can be optimized by optical computing. And this brings me to I think, honestly, it's the most important point. The future isn't something that just happens to us. It's something that we create decision by decision, investment by investment, or innovation by innovation. I know, I'm getting deep here. So as we think about these emerging technologies, let's consider not just what's possible, but also what's desirable, what can help us, what can help humanity. And really think about what kind of future do you want to build? Whoa, Tiff, you got really deep there at the end. But it's true, and it's so exciting to start thinking about. All right, I need to go get a coffee or something here. That was super exciting. I need to sit and digest all this information. I've linked some of these resources that I'm referencing down below so you can read more about them as well. And make sure to hit that subscribe button. I'll see you all soon. Thanks everyone.